Philo, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are blurry. We are not live. I don't know what happened to my live earlier. Literally, it just ended. I don't know what's going on. Let me, where's my camera? Anyway, my birthday's in four days. Or how many days? Four days. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Salute. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live. You can catch the first part of today's live, but. Or the May 22nd's live. Uh, but anyway, man, usernames at the bottom of the screen. We do got Patreon where we post five days per week. Uh, the link to everything is down in the description below, man. And if you want to make a dono to the Twitch, like, I don't know, like, you know how donations be happening in Twitch? I'm going to put it down below, too. <laughs> Talk to me. This is car removal turns ugly. Car pound cops. Debt recovery documentary. This is going to strike a nerve. I already feel it, man. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Britain's car pounds have never been big. Hold on, before I even start, this is where they be taking your car after they after they come get it off uh, ca uh, police interceptors or traffic cops. This is why I be watching this stuff, because in my head, I be wanting to know what happened to their car. And here go my answer. Busier. Where's that going? Where's that one going? Helping wage war on the growing number of illegal drivers on our roads. Got a police job in Watford, used in crime. Around 1 in 30 motorists are driving without insurance, MOT, or a valid license. Good morning, CMG. So, someone from Farms will come and collect them. This Northampton car pound is part of a family-run business that's been going for more than 50 years. Thank you, no. No. Unlock, though. They can there. hold up to 340 seized vehicles. Some have been involved in more serious crimes. These are securely stored for forensic examination by the police. This morning, new recruit Ashley has been called out to recover a Mercedes whose driver has been arrested. Where's she at? We got a used in crime. Oh, he, my fault. He's picking up. That is a large quantity of drugs found in it. So the police want to take it back, take all the trim and the speakers off and strip it all out. So, um... He gave me the key for it, but I've lost the key. Already? You gave me the key, didn't you? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Second day on the job and I've lost the key. Let's go and check the cab. Hey, the officer pulled off like, yeah, I gave it to you, shorty. That's your issue. Good luck. No. I think that is it there. There it is. As the vehicle may contain evidence, Ashley must get it back to the pound secure facility where it can be properly searched by police officers. Before I started this job, I never quite realized how many cars a day are taken off the road for this sort of thing. You know, I just, you know what I mean? I just thought, yeah, you know, one a week, two a week. But you're getting more than that a day. Various police jobs that we go to, could be a forensics job, it could be just a seizure, various types of jobs that we do. We're Is it y'all, y'all, y'all be doing the can't pay, we'll take it away as well? We're all fully trained to recover in a manner recover. suitable for the officers. And it's a good job the car's being taken off the road. The front tire's completely bald. It's as smooth as glass, that is. 
Recent data from the police revealed that illegal tires caused 169 deaths and serious injuries over a one-year period. Driving without an MOT incurs a £1,000 fine, increasing to £2,500 and a possible ban if the vehicle's deemed dangerous. Let's take it back to the depot now and uh, let the police have a further look at it. Because the police want to have another look at it and have it all apart and stuff, we bring it here to our soccer base. The scenes are crawling. Motorcycles, scooters. The police just go through all with a fine tooth cut. When the car is seized by the police, it's brought back to a secure compound where the vehicle's untouchable by anyone outside. It's under a lock gate uh, with the camera systems all around. More cameras than you get in a prison at some places. Some of the cars that we bring are for forensics and we don't want people coming in, tampering with the vehicle. So it has to be under lock and key in a secured area. Any further evidence of criminal activity found in the vehicle could play a crucial part in a prosecution. This like, this is like, um, like forensics, like hair follicles, dried up or, or cleaned up blood and things like that too. They do that in here too. Hey, look that thorough. It's not just vehicles involved in serious crime that end up at the pound. Cars parked illegally. They got quite a few lorries coming past. Causing an obstruction. The battery is dead, so you can't get it started. Or with outstanding parking fines, can all end up here too. The only way to spring your car out of the pound is to pay what's owed and make sure you have all the correct paperwork. And I've been to the pound so many times to Illinois. I wonder if it's the same out there in the UK. Are, are they always rude. The front desk ladies is always rude. It's still going to be 170. Every case is different. We've had quite a few people unhappy with the way things go. Well, I can't really two hours later and I feel like it's been a long day at night. I think people make assumptions that they're not going to get caught, and so they take a chance. There are even regular customers. What colour is it? Oh, no, it's blue. OK. But it don't look blue. OK, maybe it's one of those funny blues, changes with the weather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we do get repeat offenders. We do get people with... She's nice. I would like if I was getting my car impounded and she was there. I would have it would it would make the mood a little better because her vibe is such a nice lady. The same car coming back again. It's always funny. It's like they're old friends and you don't want to be my friend. <laughs> I know that we know you, but do you really want to know us? <laughs> and it's not unexpected for some visitors to the pound to have an unusual tale to tell. It's got to move the soccer. Uh, these is how they look in Chicago. I was wondering that other lady, like she was all open and like people could like possibly, you know, if a situation got crazy, could get to her. Now like, you can't get to them in Chicago. The window is not even this big in Chicago. They don't even have this and this. They got this and they got bars. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Arriving at CMG's Northampton Pound this morning. Dig a deep on this. Is, is on Saturday, yeah. CG. I was um, I was walking down the street. A man looking to retrieve a black BMW. I saw a police car pull up to my partner's car and start taking interest in the vehicle. So I went over to them and said, "What's wrong with the vehicle?" They said, "Um, oh, whose vehicle is it?" So I said, "It's mine," because I wanted to know what was wrong with the vehicle. He said to me, "Um, the car's got no insurance. It's been driven." It's on clone plates. Cloning a vehicle is when the identity of another vehicle is copied by stealing or duplicating their registration plates. The BMW ended up being seized and taken to the pound. I haven't committed the full offence because I didn't change the plates. Someone's did that. Someone's stolen my number plates. So I don't know what to do because I've got my car there. I've got the keys. I've got the logbooks in the vehicle. All of my stuff's in the vehicle. Before the car can be released, 
It needs the correct license plates on it, but he can't get new plates without a logbook, which is inside the car. And getting access to the car might be easier said than done. My partner bought it for me, so she's got to receive it from him. No, the car's in his name, so he's given us the full logbook because we haven't sent it off yet. If no one proves ownership within... Might be cap. That sounds like a dodgy story. It sounds possible, but it also sounds like you just... But well, who's that dumb to try to come get a stolen car back? 14 days, the BMW will be heading to the scrapyard. It's in my, my girlfriend's name. Yeah. Party. And then she can we get a logbook. Thank you very much. The man's partner produces a sales receipt and some ID. So with the paperwork in order, he can collect the logbook, pick up some new plates, and get all the documents required to drive the car. I've seen my car here on different other plates. 150 quid. I've got a dispute with them. Hopefully they give my money back, because they've done anything. I think they've used mine to do something, and they've put them on. Oh, so what he's saying is somebody took his and replaced them with some other ones, like some fake ones, so he wouldn't notice. That That's low-key believable. I'm not even going to lie. Like, that sounds like a, some criminal, like a criminal would do that. Oh, let me replace his with some fake ones that I got, so he won't notice and report it stolen. On, from a dodgy car. So when the police had drove past it, they thought it was a dodgy car. So they took it, but then they've realised, so called me back. Now I've just got to prove the car's mine for me to get it back. I believe you now. But until cool. the BMW has its genuine number plate, it's not going anywhere. Hello. 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 Across the yard, driver Steve is called to recover a vehicle that local residents have reported as being abandoned. Over 12,000 vehicles are left abandoned on UK roads every year. Removing and destroying them costs the taxpayer more than half a million pounds. Further checks have revealed the gold VW he's there to collect has no tax, MOT, or insurance. Somebody and a man go. has arrived claiming ownership of the vehicle. You've got no MOT either at the moment, so... No, 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 no you might put now. So, I, I would, yeah, I'd say you can't really be driving it anywhere unless you're going straight to an MOT station. Yeah, yeah. As the car park is council-owned, the vehicle is still classed as being on the public highway. Mm. I think he's parked it there thinking it's a safe place to park. It's off the road. He doesn't realise it's still cancelled own property. The only way it can be moved now is by tow truck. And once it's at the pound, the man can only reclaim the car by making it road legal again. Oh, it's been there for a minute. It got spider webs all type of... So you, you can't drop the car now to my address? To avoid the cost of doing that, he asks Steve if he could move the car off road for him to private property. Obviously, because it's not insured, I'd have to put a recovery job on, and then we charge you extra for the recovery. Can you give me a quote on a recovery, please? So it'll be for it'll be for, it'll be for this Passat that I'm on, yeah. and taking it from this address. If he doesn't take it off the public highway, the owner will have 14 days to sort out his tax, MOT, and insurance, or else the car will be scrapped. So how much? I would have to say you lucky a cop ain't pull up first because a cop not having it. They would have said, nope, sorry. 60 miles south, conveniently located just off the M25. What's the ridge on the vehicle? Bloody hell, wouldn't it, Is one of the busiest car pounds in the country. I think they're all out, mate. Let me just have a quick butch. On average, Lantern recover and impound up to 25 vehicles a day. First left. Oh, you want the first left here? Yeah. Their team of busy drivers are live tracked and assigned jobs from the control centre. Yeah, two officers at the scene. 
they work closely with the local police force to help make sure dangerous vehicles and those involved in crime are removed from our streets. Hi Lee, I've got a police job for you. Uh, I have a Ford Transit. I'll oh, send the rest of the details over to you. Experienced driver Lee has been called out to pick up a Ford Transit van. It's on a farm. We don't normally go into farms. So yeah, we'll see, really. It's, hey, not, it's just, just no insurance at the moment. It could entail to be a little bit more than that when we get there, but for the moment, that's all the info we've got. In this is a danger. This is a real dangerous job. At least in America, this is... I didn't see people get into fights about this. I haven't seen people get the, the pew pew pulled on them. I'm talking about the tow truck drivers. I haven't seen it. 2020, the top three most stolen vehicles in the UK are all vans. There's, there's two unmarked police cars just come out of here. Really? Uh, they're sort of pointing down there, so we'll have to back down there, I think. Another unmarked police car is waiting at the scene. What's it, name, Shorts? It's uh, Euston Crime, so it's going to be Socos. You got keys around for it, are we or not? I think they're down there. Got keys, perfect. All right, well done. Thank you very much. All right, cheers. The police believe the van may have been used to commit a crime. There's normally a little bit more to it than meets the eye when they're down a farm track or you know, off the sort Long of uh, main road or such. How you doing? Hiya. Oh, if I'll take you up then, you want to come up when you're ready, and I'll yeah, get the paperwork yeah. for you then, yeah? <laughs> They're going to photograph the bits they got in here, uh, what they say they've used to, to do whatever crime they've been done, and then it will go from there. So, away we go. I wonder how much they make those drivers. In the 1970s, Scotland Yard said transit vans were used in 95% of bank raids, earning them the nickname Britain's Most Wanted Van. And they're still frequently associated with crimes today. There's a number of them already in residence at the pound. Obviously, the outside of it's not in great condition. I don't want to play. I thought we had it, I thought we had it down to... Lee spots something else suspicious. What's the front one the same as that? We had it down as a different plate on it. And so it could be on a stolen plate as well, to be fair. Yeah, it just pops out. There, that. So you could change the same as the back one. You can put, just put a plate out and put another one on it. And then you're looking for a different van. So it's all the sort of telltale signs. Safely secured inside the pound, the police will now search it for any evidence of crime. The top three stolen vehicles in 2020 were vans. Y'all be... <laughs> uh, man, in Chicago, like, the top three stolen vehicles gotta be, like, Hellcats, Trackhawks, Chryslers, Jeeps, yeah, yeah, bit more. Kia. In this job, I've learned that there were a lot more illegal vehicles out there than anyone could ever imagine. You look at a car and you think it's legal until you, you're in this type of job. Car pounds are operated under high security conditions. Vehicles are locked up and placed under 24-hour surveillance. You guys, can I get a vehicle pulled out of place, pal? It's critical that any evidence is protected and preserved and that no one can get their vehicle back before they're legally able to drive it again. We bring in for crime, so it's been involved in crime, or something in the vehicle they want out that's going to incriminate them in any, in any way. Some people will go to the lengths of coming in, trying to get into the vehicle to get wherever it is out of it. We've had people try to get in. The security system has picked them up straight away, notified the authorities that have actually been here within minutes. It's needed to be a secure location. That security comes from overhead cameras, the locked gates. I'm pretty sure some of the criminals is willing to take that risk. They all got dogs in there? The security separation, we've got a man site here 24 7. We've got eyes pretty much anywhere. They may even try and drive through the gate. That won't happen. So 
them toys. Steel gate. <laughs> Not a mesh steel, like steel beams. In Northampton, a man looking to reclaim a BMW seized after police found it had false license plates is paying a second. Oh, he back with his girl. Okay, he back. And visit to the pound. Excuse me. After recovering the logbook from the car, he's now been able to get all his documents in order and purchase new plates. Okay, so, so everything should be fine then, right? You got no money? Should I give your boy the key? Because there's no keys for it. It's been a bizarre and expensive experience. So someone with that number plate has drove past my car, nicked my number plates, and put their plates on my car. But I didn't realize. I had to prove it was mine, and then pay quite a lot for impound insurance. It's cost me about 750 pounds to get it out. That's tragic. No, low key, I would have been trying to fight that. Something got to give. Hey, I'm a victim. <laughs> so either you pay that money or you lose your car. And he doesn't want to wait any longer to be reunited with his motor. Hello? With 250 pounds in storage costs paid, paperwork checked and in order, recovery driver Ian is given the green light to prepare the car for release. Well, Jake's just given me the keys to BMW that's got fake, uh, of a fake number plate, so not insured number plates, and I've got to take them off the car. So he's got, he's got to fit some, uh, some legal plates onto the vehicle uh, before he drives it off up the road. Obviously, they have to be fitted to be legal. Well, that's one. Two. I'll put these in here and then give him his car back. <laughs> All that's left. I'm not gonna lie, when they took I got my car towed a long time ago and they took it to the Empire lot of California <laughs> on the west side of Chicago. I went and got my stuff at like 3 a.m. wasn't playing, wasn't waiting. Um, by the time I got it out, it was like 4 a.m. I, I went in there and got it myself. And walked back there, paid everything, walked back there myself. Y'all thinking too long. They gave me the keys, so I'm going to go get it. You know what I'm mean? saying? Left is to put on the correct license plates. I get some sticky tape. See you later. Bro, finna get an immediate ticket. <laughs> hey, bro, car finna be back in here playing around with this number plate right here. Hello, it's Gary. Hello, Gary, all right? Hello, mate. Got a police job, what is it? It's a uh, BMW used in crime. Uh, uh, Alright, mate. All right, mate. All right, thank you very All right, much. Cheers. Right, thank you. Bye, 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 bye. In London, another police job for Lee. Two stolen vehicles, one BMW and one Seat Alto. Right, but all we know is they're stolen. Yeah, vehicles are used for a lot of crime. You say whether it's breaking into a house, whether it's nicking the car, should be on our... Everything where it needs a getaway driver. Left down here. We'd either have Met Police on scene or maybe Hearts on scene. So what's all about? Are we right? We get the call from the police. And obviously, if we bring in for crime, someone has been involved in crime, anything like that has to be put away into our Soco Bay, which is secure. Have we got keys for him or not? Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of crime on the roads out there. Uh, these are both stolen cars. Um, apparently, this is the one they turned up in. The long one? That one. 
tracker. We got keys for them, so I'm not sure if they maybe they bought that one earlier on. And say left it there, you may think there's a tracker on it. But it's been there a little while, and they've come back in this one. To steal which one? Cool. So the we're blue one? For them or it's a nice car, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the white one, okay. Yeah, and turn up in the old banger to pick it up. <laughs> we always like to think we're sort of like the fourth emergency service. Fourth emergency service, so 999 for the police, fire, ambulance, okay. But us going out there and clearing the roads and getting the vehicles off the road involved in the crime and the accident. Mm. You're not saving any lives, buddy, but okay. It's a lot better this one, then. You can see why they've taken it. <laughs> nice car like that. It's obviously worth quite a bit of money. So they'll say, leave it there probably 24, 40 hours, hope for the best, quickly shoot in and try and take it. Uh, they've obviously come unstuck this time. Nick in the car with no keys. The keyless vehicles are obviously very common vehicles to be taken now. Almost half of all vehicle thefts now involve keyless systems. Yeah, man. They might, we might have to go back to keys in a minute, man, because that keyless system is it's tragic for them. All you got to do is hit some wiring and do this, do that. Like, this late latest crime wave sees criminals using technology to target high-value cars. Certainly for these top Allegedly, quality cars and the keyless, keyless entry and keyless start is obviously a problem. Yeah, I mean, it's a good idea, but obviously it's a lot in more insecure than what it is if you had the key. Obviously, they can just come up at your house with a device. If your keys are somewhere within a certain perimeter, then it will unlock the car and it will start it, and they can take it without the key. The vehicles Thanks. will be taken back to the pound and securely stored for the police. They might contain important evidence. Bring it in, and then the police will come in and say, all right, we want to look into that vehicle and come in and maybe search the vehicle. Or bring this is sketchy, ain't it? This car backed up, bumper might be scratching a thing. In and then the police will come in and say, right. This car hanging on by a thread back here, like, oh man. Like we want to look into that vehicle and come in and maybe search the vehicle or fingerprint the vehicle. And it turns out that it's linked to a bigger crime somewhere else, maybe further up the country. Right. And they find it's got drugs in it or weapons in it or something that involves some other crime. That does happen. They'll do the forensic on them inside and out and see what they get off them. Once they've been searched, the cars can be returned to their owners. The owner will turn up for this one. 16 plate BMW, obviously M Sport. Yeah, they've got to pay the charge, obviously, but to be fair, they'll be glad to get their car back. Luckily, their vehicles are in one piece. Others used in crime, unroadworthy or without insurance, can end up involved in serious accidents. As we've I've seen. some sites and you do get some sites, but that's what the job's all about. This was a does, sight? It does get to you, to be fair, because I say there is a lot out there, more than probably what the public really know. And it's probably us that sees the most of it, because we pick them up and then we, we find out what's gone on in the, in the accident and find out who, he wasn't insured or he never had a license or unfortunately they was drunk. God. Yeah, I mean, and they take the chance because they're only going around the corner, but it's always just around the corners where the accident happens. Yeah, man, I did. I heard about like a study where like most accidents happen five block, like within a five block radius of where you're trying to get to or where you just left. My daughter obviously just turned 17, so she's all about to get a car. So it does worry me about her going out in a car, but that's all part and parcel. You know what I'm saying? So that little thought you have, oh, I can make it. Psst, be careful. Growing up, you know what I mean? It's, it's what it is. Thankfully, the police, Lee and his car pound colleagues work 24 seven to rid the streets of illegal vehicles. And Lee's day is far from over yet. Why would they name themselves Lantern? What are you? You're not a shining spot in anybody's day. When you when you show up, it's just incites pure negativity in my brain. You know what I'm saying? In Northampton, Steve has been called out to pick up a gold VW reported to have been abandoned. I've got no MIT at the moment, so no, no, I'm not even looking for now. But the owner has shown up and asked Steve oh, how guy, much man. it would cost to have the car towed onto private land. It's going to be another £206 or 64 pence. Well, Just take it then, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. What's your base, anyway? The man surrenders the car to the pound. It's a no-tax vehicle, it. so it's got no tax, no insurance, and no MOT. We'll put a set of dollies on the back end um, and tow it away so it's completely off the road and we've not made any wheels turn. Record any damage that's on the vehicle, um, any minor scratch, any major dent, anything. Um, just covers ourselves as a company. 
Once the car's at the pound, the owner will have 14 days to make it road legal. Otherwise, it will join around a million others sent to the scrapyard every year. Yeah, I think this one's getting crushed. Because if he had the bread to do it, he would have just got it for the extra two right now. So what happens if you know how many people get up? Uh, it'll get crushed. Crushed, yeah? Yeah, it'll go to the scrapyard and get crushed. For how, for how long? You've got 14 days. To be sorted out, yeah? Yep. Sorry. He has asked me if he's good, like what would happen if he doesn't come and get the car. Normally means they're not going to bother. Um, it's a 53 plate car. Um, by the time he's paid for everything to get it back with the back tax and stuff, it's probably not worthwhile. If I decide tonight, because I don't need any more the car. Yeah. We have to pay for storage as well. Or? Well, if you don't want the car. Yeah. No, just ring the office. Yeah. If you, they'll book you an appointment. You can go in, sign it over to us, um, and then we can scrap it on behalf okay. of the DVLA. Yeah. But, but, if I sign it over to you, do I get like a $200 or something? Like, I don't get no money or nothing? Steve finds himself in a tight spot. He's gonna move his car for me. <laughs> Take his car away and he makes my life easier to get it out. I feel like any car is worth any amount of money. Like, like, I, me personally, even if the car is like a hundred dollars less than what I have to pay for to get it fixed. So, say if oh the car's only worth eight hundred dollars and it costs nine hundred dollars to fix, I'm still going to go get it fixed because I don't have the I don't have the. <laughs> what if you don't have the credit to go get a new car? You know what I'm saying? Or you just gonna have to downgrade and get something cheaper? Like, no, give me my car. Sentimental value is attached to this, you feel me? I need these. Back at base, Steve adds the vehicle to the others in car pound limbo, destined for collection or the scrap heap. I've worked in other areas in the country and I've never known anywhere like Northampton. Northampton just seems to have a lot of untaxed, uninsured vehicles. I don't know whether it's because the police are more proactive around here or whether they can't afford it or whether they don't feel like they need it. A lot of the older cars, they just, it's not worth their while paying the tax to get it back. So they just let it go and we end up storing under the cars. Man, what? Bro. There has to be somebody that can capitalize off this. <laughs> oh, okay. Get, like, sell a car to me. However long that process it takes, like, I, I buy the car for you for $100. You're not going to go get it. Let me get it for $100. i will take care of everything, put it on a lot, fix it up, and sell it for overpriced to somebody who, like me, would not have good credit to get a new one. You know what I'm saying? Or, or not the... You know what I'm saying? Some type of profit got to be able to be made. This month alone, I think I've taken 36 to the scrapyard. So yeah, we do get a lot of going to scrap rather than being picked up. They don't have an auction for these? There's never a dull day in the scrap industry. If the gold VW isn't picked up, and its final hours could be spent here. And they take the tires off to recycle them too, right? At one of Britain's many scrapyards. Got your weight, pal. If you want to just pull down to the bottom, pal, I'll take it off for you. We are the execution line and the end of line for these vehicles um, to, to stop them going back on the road, ultimately. We collect thousands of uh, abandoned vehicles and nuisance vehicles all over the UK. Walter Hesselwood in Sheffield crush 8,000 vehicles a year. It's a specialist procedure. So, that's the crusher? This vehicle so far, um, well, it's had the wheels taken off it, and the car will have already been stripped of the parts that will have been of value. They're making sure they get their little Now what we will do, the first thing is we will drain the oil from the engine. So we're going to take the car and then put it onto the actual stands so that you can drain the fuel from the vehicle as well. 
to do all that? The next stage is to rip out the car's heart, its engine. Oh, that was one of the easy ones. Yeah. <laughs> For what? We get vehicles from local councils, the local authority, um, you know, compounds where vehicles have been taken from the roadside in an accident. And some have been taken off the road for proceeds of crime, you know, drug deals, things like that. Like I say, all shapes and sizes of vehicles, different makes and models, different conditions and things like that. And they all, you know, end up in the crusher. This is the final part of the process. John's about to pick the car up, put it into the baler, and then it'll come out as a bale. Two hundred and ninety pounds of pressure is about to crush this car. We get thousands of enquiries each month for people looking to scrap the vehicles. It's a wonder sometimes there are so many vehicles still on the road yeah. with the amount of vehicles that we get through the network. Turned them uh, to a Twix. <laughs> they look like a Twix. That's crazy. Well, that's it. She's gone. Boy, if you don't give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Volkswagen. <laughs> The scrapyard plays an important role in ridding Britain's roads of illegal vehicles. We buy a couple of hundred vehicles a week, and a percentage of them have come from police recovery in some way, shape or form. We do occasionally get the Porsche 911s, Maseratis that come through the gates. It is a shame to see some of these good cars go to scrap. See, them is the ones that I be trying to make a profit on. Like, hey, hey, let me get these. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Of course, you're going to get a lot of duds, but you're going to make it up when you get that good one. Better than our own sometimes. When they've been involved in crimes, they have to be end of life. Um, so when the police escort some of the vehicles into the yard, um, they have to be watched into the crusher so that they, they make sure that we do um, crush the vehicles and they can't go back on the road. Vehicle crime is, is on the up and it is a big problem and it's only it's going to carry on being a problem. I don't foresee it will ever really stop. Without insurance, over a million cars are being driven illegally on Britain's roads. Uninsured cars, probably at one a day. The average annual cost of car insurance is just under £500. If you're caught without it, you face a £300 fine, six points on your license, and your vehicle could be seized. Some illegal drivers are captured by automatic number plate recognition cameras, which check details against the DVLA database. Other drivers come unstuck having been stopped for a different reason. Police, they were pulled a car over on the roadside, do their checks on it, no insurance, some people say, oh, I thought it was this, or I thought it was that, or I thought my, my girlfriend was doing it, or my husband was doing it. But at the end of the day, they've got no insurance, so the car will be going, and they'll have to pay the charges. Lucrative business, if you can own a private one. Hello, Lee. Hello, Gary, all right? Hello, mate. Got a police job in Watford. Lee is en route to pick up yet another uninsured vehicle spotted by the police. We've got a full focus. Pulled him over, he's got no insurance. So now the vassals come and recover the car. Police should be on scene with it. Uh, maybe the customer might still be there. So we'll see when we get there. <laughs> should be down here. Somewhere down here. That's a little full focus. Right, here we are. How are you, all right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah. Waiting on the scene are plain clothes officers in an unmarked car. It's a no insurance? Yeah, with no keys, though. Haven't you? No. Oh, well, they will not tell you that. No. Ah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, is it open or not? It's open. But no keys? Yeah. Well, if I'll give you that. A car oh, without keys them, uh... means it can't be driven onto the back of Lee's truck. You didn't tell me there was no keys, did you? So, you're always full of surprises, didn't you? Sorry. <laughs> didn't you drag it? I've got no keys for it. So I can only assume the owner's obviously not give the keys over uh, and gone off with them. 
So we're just about pictures, obviously a bit of damage on it. There's wing mirror missing now, she's just straight away. Yeah, bit of side and a few bits and bobs. This window rolls on with tape, so that's not a good sign. And the seatbelt's plugged in, because they don't put it on. <laughs> I mean, they've got no insurance, they're running around with broken wing mirrors and no seatbelt on, on the phone, draws right. attention right. to them. Cider. You stop them for that, you find out no insurance and all the rest of it. You'll yeah, be surprised they because you bring in that. They will stop just by looking at the car. You sort of take one look at them, you see they're not roadworthy. They're sort of a bit of an eyesore. They stick out when you're going down the road. You normally find them sort of people that drive around with no insurance. They shouldn't be doing it, obviously, but some people will. Some people just keep going, they'll go and buy an old banger, take it out, get stopped for no insurance, think nothing of it, go and get another one and they'll just keep doing it. Some people just take the chance and just be honest, getting stopped and getting a car taken off them don't really make a difference to them, they'll just go and get buy another one. One in five road traffic accidents are linked to uninsured vehicles. Got it up there. That's it, we're on. So we'll just get some straps on it and then we'll be ready to go. A woman appears. Have you got the certificate the police give you or not the paperwork? Just for your name? She claims her belongings are inside the car. My daughter's left her birth certificate thing in the back of the car. But as the vehicle's been seized, she needs permission from the police before Lee can give her access. Is it all right, lady, to have it out? Long drive. I don't know if this is a lady, obviously. I don't know who's the owner of it. She needs permission from the police. It's just the LOL uh, drawing book. And he said he'd get it for me, it's fine. If you're happy, I'll get, if you're happy, I'll, I'll get it for like, I, I ain't got nothing against you. Yeah? yeah? All right, all right, I'll get it. If you tell me what it is, I'll get it out for you. The woman claims it isn't her car. Well, it weren't my vehicle. He's going to buy the vehicle. So tell us, so, someone dropped it off for you, Bill? Yeah, so just to, like, to test drive it, but um, obviously it's come up no insurance. So the police have took the vehicle and then they have this car. We watched too much police interceptors for this excuse. Oh, somebody just wanted to sell it to me. I don't know what's going on. Whoever's got the insurance in the car will be able to collect it. Yeah, really. I didn't know you had to have insurance to test drive it. She says her and her partner only took it for a test drive. Uh, in the back of the driver's seat, you know, behind the front of the driver's yeah. seat. But there's a number of items inside she wants to retrieve. Yeah, right, is it this book here? Yeah, and the, the blue bag. Oh, the... that book. Thank you. What else come out of this? I'm going mad about it. Yeah. Pens. Is that everything, yeah? Yeah, that's it. All right. In the back. Yeah. yeah. In the boot. In the boot, you're saying? Yeah, there's a. I've had a tool. Have you got the key for it or not? Oh, it's no. locked. What's in the back? It's just like a long tube. He's got his um, tool tree. It's a tool which is probably work. Well, a pair of bolt croppers or not? Yeah, I think it's both. Them? Yeah. Thank that's you. all that's in there. Is that right? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Thank yeah. You. Mighty suspicious. What are you planning on leaving it with? You're not coming back for it then, or be scrapping it? Yeah, that's it. All right, no problem. Right. He, he was gonna, he was gonna buy it anyway, and the lady, the lady's old, so she said. She was going to get it crushed anyway, so she's yeah. going to get her own like, little bit of money. Yeah, yeah. All right, no problem. Anyway. That's it. All right, no worries. Thank you. All right, see ya. Thanks a lot. Obviously, the lady's come out. Uh, she wanted to get a few bits out of it, uh, which she's done, and now she looks like she's going to scrap it. So it's not exactly in the best conditions, to be fair. But the best place for it probably is a scrap. <laughs> so. Now it's crossed paths with the police, it looks likely this uninsured, unwanted, and possibly unroadworthy vehicle is heading to the crusher. What if cars come alive at night and are, have real emotions and feelings? And the rest of the cars looking at them like, oh no, Woody, you're going to the crusher. Am I high? My fault. Or not? another one. Hello? All right, thanks for that. Police jobs can come in at any time. Dude, what a bear have keys. I do not want to be lying on the floor in this weather. 
Well, listen, you got on the outfit for it, buddy. And car pound operatives work 24-7. All right, let's go. Removing illegal vehicles from our roads all through the night. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Perfect. Uh, that's me. Definitely no tax. Definitely no tax. Uh, right. It's been out for a year. Uh, oh, dear. Yeah. Right. I'll just do my photos. <laughs> it's not obviously something that hasn't slipped someone's mind. It's definitely one of them. I'm not paying it. It doesn't matter if it's got keys. It doesn't matter if it's in a multi-story car park. It doesn't matter if it's in an underground car park. We will get the car. We're awfully confident about that. Lantern recovery, Daniel speaking. At the control center, it's late in the day when another police call out for an uninsured driver comes in. Down at the Shell petrol station. Yeah, I'll get the driver on his way. It's 30 minutes. We just had a call from the police uh, to go recover a Honda Civic from the petrol station on the A1 at Bournemouth. The driver and his friend are both deaf. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Everything out, mate. All done. It looks a little bit beaten up as it's gone past, so I've checked it. It's got no taxes declared off roads, no insurance. They're trying, as a lot of people will, play the my license is at home game that we've got ways and means of getting physical copies of people's driving licenses at the roadside. Never used to, uh, but it's a very handy system. Oh, that's it. So, no insurance. How did that transaction even work? How do you know what they was talking about? I mean, the gift of hand gestures is cool and all, but like... Insurance, tax, uh, you was. license. Been caught with no insurance, and that's it. You're gonna lose them out. I think it's gonna be reverse, you'll end up scrapping it. It's quite a strong smell of cannabis from it, to be fair. Straight away, as soon as you open the door, you can smell it. Chilled out, haven't they? Yeah, 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 they're very chilled out. <laughs> they're gonna have a nice little walk home. For Lee, it's one last trip back to the car park. They was blowing that. Pack. Down before his day ends. Probably well worth well the cop of pulling it over because obviously looking at the state from the outside, it's questionable whether it should be on the road. The insurance probably works out more than what the cars were. So probably hence why they haven't insured it. They're probably just a cheap run around, take a chance for a week, couple of days, a month or whatever and see how they go, and obviously they've been caught no insurance. I don't think they'll be coming back for it, so I think they'll probably give this a miss and uh, end up scrapping it, I think. With the car securely locked away at the pound, it's one less illegal vehicle on Britain's roads. All taken care of while the country sleeps. It's country sleeps. Well, it was daytime the entire bit. It's amazing to know that there's that many cars out there that shouldn't be on the road for various reasons. This will probably be a one-time thing for me watching this. Now I know, problem solved in my head and it won't be back. I believe that the, the illegal vehicles that I'm taking off the road are preventing other crimes to be committed as well. I'm quite happy that Oh, this, this is not a series, though. This is like a documentary. Preventing bigger things by doing a smaller thing. Unfortunately, it's, it's not one rule for one, one for another. The same rule applies to everyone. It's not only their pocket they're playing with, it's other people's. So that's what puts everyone's money up because people are doing this. The rules are in place for a reason, and everyone's got to abide by the rules. Keep everyone safe. Alright, we're done. Alright, we're gone.